Welcome to Justice for New York. I'm your host, Charles Collins. All documentation concerning Justice for New York videos can be found at justicefornewyork.com. There are also family court petitions concerning the right to a jury trial, petitions to vacate support magistrate and judicial hearing officers' orders as they are issued in violation of the New York State Constitution, and there is also a demand for our probation reports and psychological evaluations that the court orders, but the court orders that you can't read them or see them. That is a violation of your right to due process and equal protection of the law. They also order that the people preparing these reports do not have to testify and there is no accountability. This has to stop. Demand your reports so you can know what's being told to the court. And now for our presentation. Now, Thank you. the next issue we're going to address are some of the other statutes. I raised about 12 or 13 statutes that were unconstitutional in my court papers. One of them was 466C. A states that the, fam the Supreme Court can refer the matter to the family court. That's correct. They can. B says the Supreme Court can hold on to it and not transfer it to the family court. That is also what they can do. Point C. If the Supreme Court enters an order granting alimony maintenance or support in an action for divorce, separation, or annulment, the Supreme Court does not exercise the authority given under A or B. In other words, it's silent. It doesn't state that it's referring it, and it doesn't state that it's keeping it. The court may transfer the... They're saying that the, court, the family court now has jurisdiction if it's silent. That's not what the state constitution says. The New York state constitution requires shall have jurisdiction over the following class and action proceeding. The support of dependents except for support of incidental actions and proceedings in the state for matrimony, or divorce, marriage, and dissolution of marriage. The family court shall also have jurisdiction to determine with the same powers possessed by the Supreme Court the following matters when referred to the family court from the Supreme Court. In other words, if there's no referral from the su Supreme Court, family court doesn't have jurisdiction. That's if there's been a divorce action. If you can go directly into family court, but once you're in Supreme Court, Supreme Court has made a ruling, Family court does not have jurisdiction unless there is a referral. Now, this is saying they don't need a referral, but the Constitution says they do need a referral. This violates the state Constitution. Now, my illustrious attorney, Michael Catafimo, they told me, sent me a letter on a Friday afternoon, I got it about 3 o'clock, telling me that the New York State Court of Appeals has held this to be constitutional. And I'm going, no way. Well, let's see what he did. If you read Part B, or if a court of competent jurisdiction, not of the state of New York, shall enter an order or decree granting alimony maintenance, or support in any action. The family court may entertain the application. There's two parts. One if the court is a New York State divorce decree, one is a foreign. He referred me to, here was his letter, authorized to enforce or modify Supreme Court judgments awarding child support unless the Supreme Court has reserved the exclusive jurisdiction to do so. That's not what the Constitution says. The Constitution says it has to be referred. So right there in the first sentence, he's lying. 
Second section. The state's highest court has held that FCA is constitutionally authorized exercise of the legislator's authority. Matter of Seats versus Drago. Specifically holds that 466C authorized by Section 7 of the New York State Constitution. Yes, they did. But here's the kicker. And this is where he lied. Seats versus Drago. The right to commence a proceeding to enforce or modify the provisions of a foreign divorce decree in the courts of this state. Prior to the enactment of this 466, the courts of this state were without jurisdiction to entertain a request to enforce or modify provisions of a foreign divorce decree. This is all on a foreign divorce decree. Mine was New York State. Obviously, Michael Catafimo doesn't know the difference between a foreign divorce decree and a New York State divorce decree. And he's sitting here lying his ass uh, butt off about this being co held constitutional. Totally false. But this is what the attorneys do. He also refused to argue my right to a public trial. He refused to argue my right to a jury trial. He refused to argue that these court orders by support magistrates were illegal, by Warner was illegal. He refused to do anything. It's like go in there and let them do what they want to you because I'm not going to protect your rights. I wouldn't recommend him to anybody. He's in Greenwich, New York, in case you want to know which Michael Catafimo I'm referring to. Now, New York State has a little quandary here as to how the judges address things. Under Domestic Relations Law 37A, registration of an out-of-state court order under this shall not confer jurisdiction over the parties for a purpose other than enforcement of the registered order. Well, wait a minute. They registered, so all New York can do is determine if you're guilty or not. They can't modify it. They can't change it under 37A. But under 466C, they can. So the judges, if it's for a downward modification, we can't do anything and dismiss it. If it's for an upward modification, oh, we got jurisdiction to hear it. So it depends on the whim of the judge which one of the two sections of the law he wants to hear. Section 5241. What that has to deal with is when you're ordered to ch pay, pay child support, what a lot of these judges do when you first go into the family court, the first time in, they'll, if you own the house or whatever, they'll get the father to agree to pay for the mortgage on the house so the kids can live there. Can you do that for a month? I'll tell you, it's not a month, but that's what they say. The guy goes, sure, I'll, I'll pay the mortgage on the house so the kids can stay there. Next time he goes into court, he's now got a full-blown support petition. So not only... Do they hit him with paying the mortgage and everything on the house, but then they hit him for a full-blown mortgage. And you start adding the two together, most of the times it comes to the father's full income, which will be shown. Now, what it also happens is, if you, if, if you walk in there and the judge issues an order for support off the top of his head, what they do is, Say the order comes, after a trial, it comes down, or you're not, you, first off, holding you to pay the mortgage and stuff. Say your mortgage is 1000 a month. You pay $500 in child support. So you're paying $1,500 a month. Then the court determines you should only be paying 500 a month based upon the Child Support Standards Act. All that money you paid, overpaid, by paying the mortgage and stuff, you're not entitled to a refund of. Now, let's say instead of paying 500, you should have been paying 600. 
they're going to go back and assess you another $100 for every month that you are in court, which can be six months, eight months, you know, they like to drag things out. So now you're $800 in arrears or more, but you don't get any credit for the mortgage and stuff you were paying on the house. Now, one of the things is, if you read the law, inherent in child support is housing. So you get to pay housing twice for your kids. Makes a lot of sense, but this is how New York operates. They want you in arrears, but what's unconstitutional is they hold you're not entitled to a refund, but if you have to make up the difference. So therefore, what they're doing is they're treating one person different than the other person. And their argument in my case when I raised that issue was the mother has a condiment need to have funds available to her for the support of the children. Well, the father also needs money to have live on. And a lot of times the fathers don't have money to live on, which is going to be discussed in a little bit. This is another one, Family Court, Section 449 and 451. One of the big things here is the court has continuing jurisdiction over any court order, and they love to hold on to them. But on the other hand, if your ex-wife moves out of state and takes the kids, once the kids are out of state for six months, guess what? You're going to that, you have to go to that state. They will not entertain it here. In other words, you go find them. But yet on the support, they're going to make sure they keep it. They're going to have you, their hands right on you. And they don't care if you're seeing your kids or not. Now, one of the other things they do, and this is for people that get in trouble, that have been arrested for other crimes and stuff, that are incarcerated. Incarceration shall not be a bar to finding a substantial change in circumstances, provided such incarceration is not the result of non-payment of child support order, or an offense against the custodial parent or child who is the subject of the court order or judgment. Most of the courts, if a father ends up in jail for any time, say for burglary, robbery, whatever, they won't reduce his child support. It just keeps adding up and adding up each month until he gets out of jail. And now he's five, ten thousand dollars in arrears. He's never going to get caught up. The next one, 652 is basically the same as 466. But what was interesting with this is, this is the summary of the, an act to amend the Family Court Act in relation to application to enforce modified custody and visitation orders and decrees of the Supreme Court in cases. Now, if you remember, back in the family, back in the state constitution, it says family, the matters have to be referred to the family court for the family court to have jurisdiction if the Supreme Court has made a ruling on custody or visitation. Now, it says six would be amended to vest jurisdiction in the family court. Well, first off, the legislature can't vest jurisdiction into a constitutional court. It's illegal. In the family court, in those cases where a matrimonial decree or order providing for custody or visitation is silent as to its enforcement or modification. If it's silent, it means the Supreme Court hasn't referred it. It's that simple. If it wanted to refer it, it would refer it, but it doesn't. It simply means the Supreme Court has not referred those issues to the family court as required. So now they're trying to vest jurisdiction where the, which contradicts the state constitution. Again, I think it states, the family court shall have jurisdiction determine that with the same powers possessed by and the family court is uh, such is an order of the family court appealable under her. They don't have the authority to hear it. This is what people need to learn is the state constitution. 
Obviously, our representatives haven't read it. Obviously, Governor Cuomo, Eric Schneiderman, Hillary Clinton, Chuck Schumer, Chief Judge DeFore, all these, and I have more that are unconstitutional. So I'm going to end it with these and go on to the next issue. Schneiderman, Senator Schumer, and Chief Judge DeFore. I have raised the constitutionality of over 12 state statutes. Nobody wants to address them. The right to a public trial, jury trial, they lied when they addressed it, as I documented previously. The support magistrates and JHOs hearing cases that only judges are supposed to hear pursuant to the New York State Constitution. How people paying child support are treated differently than those who are receiving the child support when they should be treated equally. These statutes are denying people their due process and equal protection of the law constitutional rights. They have to be addressed. The courts have to address them. They're required to, but nobody is making them do so. You have, you're the representatives of the people. Do something about it. People shouldn't be sent to jail because of an unconstitutional state statute. People shouldn't be deprived of their rights because of an unconstitutional state statute. And these judges come up with the strangest things to justify their so-called rulings that are meant and are deliberately to defraud, deceive, and injure the citizens of this state. These judges need to be removed from the bench. Now.